Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to strip a parts car, and I mean strip it, so it looks like this. And then I'll use some of those parts to fix up my other car, and I'll sell the extra parts to make a good amount of money. How much money, you might ask? Well, you'll find out. If you missed the last video, in that video I showed you how to actually find a parts car and buy it, as well as some of the risks involved. I'll link that video in the description so you can check it out. Now I just got the car, and the first thing to do is to jack the car up to make it easy to work on. It is getting dark out, but that won't stop me. Now I know I just got the car, but I need to get rid of it as quickly as possible to make room in the driveway, because my driveway gets filled with my family's cars. So with the car safely jacked up, I have it on ramps in the front, and then I have a couple of jack stands in the back, plus the jack. This thing is not going anywhere. It's nice and safe to work on. Let's begin parting this out. I'm going to start at the front of the car and work my way back. And if you can't tell already, power tools are going to be your best friend when parting out a car. The hood's easy enough, two bolts on each side, and having a helper makes it a lot easier since the hood is heavy and cumbersome. Next is the front bumper with a few bolts up top and a few bolts down below, and it comes right off. And don't forget about those expensive headlights. And now I'm working my way back and getting the side skirt off. This is so easy. Remove a few bolts, don't damage it when you remove it, good. And this is going to look awesome on my dad's Jag. Next we unbolt the front fender and start removing doors. The doors are easy to remove as well, just a couple of bolts holding it in. And make sure you hold the door so it doesn't just drop when you remove that last bolt. Pull the electrical connector out and that's all there is to it. Now the doors are pretty heavy so be prepared. Just out of curiosity I wanted to see how much the door actually weighs. What do you guys think? Take a guess because we're about to find out. So 75 pounds and that's just one door. Talk about weight reduction. Alright there's only a couple more body pieces left. We got the trunk, we got the rear bumper, some tail lights. The only problem now is there's no battery power and the only way to open up a Jaguar trunk is with battery power. There's no keyhole or anything back here. I even tried putting 12 volts to the leads where the battery would be. Nothing. The only way to get this trunk open is if this electric button works or if somebody's trapped inside and they pull that safety release in there. So that gave me an idea. I should go and take apart the seats in the back. I got this seat to lift up about that much and you could kind of see back there. There's a little hole for me to crawl through so let's see if I can do this. So if you don't like tight spaces this is definitely not for you. I have my cell phone on me just in case. I don't think I'm gonna get stuck but you never know. Here goes. And I just need to get more of my body in here because I can't reach it. Alright, I'm in and let's just hope this latch works. Good, and we got the trunk open. So we got the trunk open and let me show you how. Right here there's a release cable that you just pull and the trunk pops open. And with that little adventure, let's call it a night. It is now morning and let's see what we got done last night. We actually got a lot done. Got that trunk open which was a big deal. And we removed all the doors, the hood, the side skirts, and the front bumper along with the lights which is big. I want to do the engine. I'm going to remove a bunch of parts from here which could be all sold or saved so if something breaks on the other Jaguar I could use it. But first, let's finish where we left off and remove the trunk and bumper for the last two body panels that we want. We also want stuff like the spare, the scissor jack, and any electronics like the reverse sensor computer because all this stuff has value. And this is probably why he had an electrical issue because he ran his own speaker system and probably didn't know how to do it. Looks like some of his wires actually burnt so he probably had too much current and then burnt up some wiring somewhere. Who knows? We want to remove these interior pieces too because we need to get to the bolts to remove the bumper and tail lights. And that is the rear trunk area completely gutted. Can't forget about the weather stripping which is in good condition, plus the tail lights, and finally the bumper which is in great shape and is going to look awesome on my dad's Jag. The rear crash bar is in high demand due to all the rear end accidents and it's easy to remove so taking that is a no brainer. And finally the trunk or boot as our British friends call it unbolts and comes right off. And just like that the whole trunk and rear end of the car is gutted. And then here's everything kind of organized. I'll get you guys the value of everything at the end of the video. We'll see how much this is all worth. I'm keeping the rear bumper, but everything else could be sold. Now let's move on to the engine bay. I don't really need engine parts, but they're good to sell, so I'm spending a few minutes here and getting the easy to reach parts. 
So when you're disassembling your engine, or even just working on your engine, a lot of times you're going to have to deal with these hose clamps which are a pain to get off. So I highly recommend you invest in a good pair of hose clamp pliers. This is going to make your life that much easier. For example, we have a hose clamp right here. You can see the lips of the pliers grab right onto the hose clamp. No problem at all. And then we could easily slide this off. And then we could take our hose off just like that. I'll leave a link in the description for any tools that I use in this video. But I mean, this is awesome because it just, it grabs on and won't fling off like when you use a regular pliers. And that pretty much covers everything that I'm grabbing from the engine bay. I only took parts that were either easy to get or have some value to it. Because there are parts like this alternator that's all the way buried, way down there, that's not going to be easy to get. It's going to take me more time than it's worth, so I'm not going to bother with stuff like that. But everything else on the top that was easy to get to that had value, I grabbed. Speaking of grabbing, make sure you grab all your tools out of the engine bay after you're done working because you don't want to leave anything in here, ratchets, wrenches, anything of value. I hate losing tools and this car is going to the scrapyard after we're done with this. Speaking of tools, definitely invest in one of these impact guns. It could be a pneumatic one, it could be an electric one. It's going to save you a lot of time because you could easily just unscrew bolts real quickly and get all the parts that you need out as quick as possible so you're not wasting time. This thing will pay for itself with just a few of these parts. And with about an hour, hour and a half of removing parts, you can see I got a ton of good stuff, a lot of stuff with value. I'll tally it up at the end and show you guys how much it's all worth. And not only are these parts going to help pay for the parts car, but as the parts break in my good car, I could just grab these and put them right in. So with everything removed from the engine bay, our next step is going to be stripping out the interior. Now before we work on the interior, change out your gloves to some nice new ones so you don't get your interior pieces dirty. We'll start with pulling the weather stripping off. And lucky for me, the rear seats were already loosened because they are trying to figure out where the electrical problem was with the car. And surprisingly, these Jaguar floor mats are very expensive. They're $100 just for the front pair. And when working on the interior, you should get yourself a nice set of panel clip tools. These things are going to help you remove all those pieces without breaking them. And a little tip, just get some black tape and cover the tip of your tool so that you don't end up scratching any of your nice interior panels. And I'm not sure what it is, but the disassembly of the rest of the interior is very satisfying. All we have left is the center console, which comes right out with a few screws removed. And then with everything removed, the carpet comes right out. Even the headliner was easy to remove for once, and it just slides out the rear door. I also want to grab the side airbags and figured why not remove the sunroof, which is held in with just a couple of bolts. All right, now we have everything removed from the interior, from the rear seats to the sunroof. Everything is completely stripped, and it's kind of cool to see how cars are put together. And this is something you don't really get to see every day. Now there's one last thing I want to get from this car before I push it into the street and get it towed away. And with a few extra bolts removed, we have our drive shaft. Now the parts car has been stripped of almost everything, the exterior is parted, the interior is gutted, so now I could get this car towed away. But there's one big problem, where do you keep all the parts? Surprisingly enough, a parted car takes up a lot of room, almost as much room as a whole car. So the hardest part of this process is finding space for your car parts. Organization is key, and in this case I'm temporarily using my garage to store all the parts. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the larger parts in the shed in my backyard, and then any of these smaller parts I'm going to fit up into the attic of my garage. But the limiting factor to a parts car is definitely the space, so make sure you have at least some space to put all these car parts. And then the next factor is the actual parts car. I stripped my parts car immediately after I got it, because my driveway fills up real quickly, so I can't have this car taking up space. I also don't want a strip car in my driveway for more than a few days because it doesn't look good and I don't want to upset the neighbors. So I want this car towed away as quick as I possibly can. Now getting the car towed doesn't cost you any money. You actually get paid because surprisingly enough, this car is worth something. To find a company that pays you to take your car, I'll include a link to the search I did in the description. I called this place up, they asked a few questions about the condition of the car, I told them it was stripped, and they scheduled a pickup. The guy handed me a check, and now I made some money, plus the scrap car got taken away, so you really can't beat that. Any guesses on how much extra money I made for the junk car? Well, I got paid $190 to get that scrap Jag towed away. Plus, I got all these parts to install my dad's Jag, so let's get that done now. Let's start at the front with removing the front bumper and headlights. And since I couldn't remove the welded crash bar, I want to prevent this one from rusting, so I'm going to hit it with some spray paint. Let's add the new headlights, and then the new front bumper, and check that out. What a difference that makes. No more crack, and that bumper looks 
awesome. So let's move to the side skirt. I can't wait to get rid of this side skirt with a hole in it. And with the old one removed, pop in the new one. And again, look at that transformation. So much better. Now let's move to the interior pieces. First, let's get this old scratched up glove box changed out for this other glove box, which looks way better. Next, we need to add the cover to the rear view mirror. The mirror actually pops off just like that. Then we could add our piece, push the mirror back in place, and that little piece completes the interior. Now, let's go under the car and replace the drive shaft. So when we got the car, we noticed a vibration, which I thought was from wheels, but it ended up being the drive shaft. Just look at all that play in the drive shaft, which isn't supposed to move at all. So to replace this out, unscrew a few bolts to remove the front of the drive shaft, the rear of the drive shaft, and the center bearing, and then the drive shaft pulls right out. Out with the old, in with the new. When you add the bolts, torque them down in a crisscross pattern to evenly seat the drive shaft. One tip so you don't lose track of what bolts you torqued is to mark the torque bolts with some paint. And then we can tighten down the center bearing and it's that easy. Now that the wobbly drive shaft has finally been replaced, we'll see if the vibrations are gone after our test drive. But first, we need to swap out one last piece, the rear bumper. Out with the old bumper and in with the new. And now with the rear bumper done, we have one last thing we need to do, and that is install our reverse speaker, which will hopefully allow the reverse sensors to work. So the speaker is located right below the rear glass here, right under here. So just push this little cover off to the side, just unplug the old speaker, and I'm pretty sure this is broken, so let's replace it with the one from the parts car. Cover it back up, and we are done. That's all it takes. And there we go. With that reverse speaker in there, we're done restoring this Jag. I can't wait to show my dad this car and go for a ride in the morning. And there she is, day three. Gonna go and show my dad the car. Check out the rear bumper. The rear bumper is looking amazing. Check out that reflection. Oh man, that looks so good, especially compared to the old one. Coming around to the side skirt. Woo, look at that, no hole. And that looks nice and clean. And then coming around to the front, unfortunately, the fenders didn't match. So I'm just going to leave it like this, plus this one has the pinstripe. I'm going to work on popping that dent out. I think that'll make a good video. And then if we check out the front here, look at those headlights. Oh man, they look so good. Nice and clear and leveled. And then we have our front bumper. I'm going to go do a little patchwork on this, make it look nice. But for now, I mean, the bumper looks awesome. So let's back the car off the ramps. All right, you hear that? That is the backup sensors working. So it was that little speaker. Beautiful. Oh, and I just heard my dad. Oh, mackerel. Wow, the front left looks great. What a difference, huh? Right? I say we should go for a ride. The, uh, the hole is gone. It's, it's amazing. It looks great from the outside. The crack is gone. The back bumper, all the scratches are gone and the dents. And it rides nice and smooth. It's better than when we got it. I love this car and I love it even more now. Well, if you can't tell, I'd say my dad was pretty happy, and that's what it's all about right there. Now let's wrap this video up. So I'm sure you guys are wondering how much value there is right here in car parts. And to give you an idea of the value of the parts that we have here, I printed up an inventory sheet with all the parts and reasonable prices I could get for them. And they're so reasonable, I already sold $500 worth of these parts in the first week alone, which is awesome. If we check out the engine, we have about $425 worth of parts. This is where you could make a lot of money. Body parts aren't cheap. They're already painted, they're in decent shape, so we could get about $2,350 if we sell the parts. And then on the interior, we have about $1,700 worth of parts. So altogether, we have about $4,665 worth of parts, and then the car cost us $1,484. So after all that taken into consideration, you could profit $3,181 with just these parts. Also remember, we have an excellent looking Jaguar that we increased the value at least $1,000. And finally, you learn a ton about the car that you're working on. So now if I ever need to change a gauge cluster bulb or something in the Jaguar, I know how to take this all apart. If I ever need to change a radio, whatever, airbags, anything that goes bad on that car, I'll know how to fix because I took apart everything. And that knowledge is very valuable for a car that you want to keep. So there you go. Pretty much everything that you'll need to know about parting a car 
when it's worth doing, how to do it, the profit that you can make from it, the fun you can have with it, all good stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll link this sheet in the description along with where I got the car, the tools that I used to take the car apart, and if you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing for more awesome videos just like this.